Mandela. As we all know, Metro Manila is the most um, populated city in the Philippines. Actually, it's the most densely populated city in the world. Um, just to give you a trivia, it's composed of 12 million people just in the national capital region alone. So, um, Metro Manila is the economic, economic and political heart of the Philippines. And um, it is home to extensive commerce and some of the most historically and culturally significant landmarks will be found in Metro Manila. So we're here to discuss about the three pillars that were shared a while ago by attorney. And we agreed in sharing with you guys like uh, what is there that we can, what, like the landmarks that you can find in Metro Manila. So first off, we'd like to start with um, the natural asset protection. So we agreed on, I'll, I'll give the mic to Ms. Pateros to Ms. Uh, Pasig and uh, Ms. Las Pinas to share about what is there that we can say about the natural asset protection in Metro Manila. Okay, so I'm from Pateros. Um, Pateros is the lone municipality in Metro Manila. Some of you may not know Pateros because Pateros is really small. It's as big as um, four barangays of Pateros. It is located uh, in we're uh, bounded by Pegate City, Makati City, and Asics City. So the only natural resource that we have is the river. And in the last two decades, uh, we can no longer have the Pagoda City. We used to celebrate that. We have a fluvial parade, uh, wherein we celebrate the Balutsukuti Festival. But uh, this year, uh, our local government has made efforts to uh, come up with a cleanup drive to revive the Pagoda Seito. So generate income for the, from that cleanup drive by uh, making uh, bags from the water leaves that we gather from the rivers. So um, from Las Piñas, uh, Las Piñas actually, um, though, uh, we are famous because um, we are considered to be one of the cleanest and greenest uh, cities in Metro Manila or in NCR. But then again, um, it's just a few people or just a few people who know that uh, in the heart of Metro Manila, we house the only South Mangrove in Metro Manila. And it's the only uh, mangrove site or the, um, what we call the haven for wildlife. Heaven for Wildlife in Metro Manila. Um, we call it the Costa Lagoon, uh, which is um, it's composed of the Long Island and the Freedom Island. It's actually um, an initiative by Las Piñas and Caranaque. But then again, um, we take part in preserving what we have. So we have mangroves. We have 72 species of mangroves and then of course 80 species of birds within that area. The government or the municipality, they support uh, the only ecotourism uh, eco that we have. They give or uh, they provide eco uh, or rangers that or tourist guide also slash tourist guide who helps the visit uh, who help the visitors within the area. So of course they get to uh, roam roam around the area, but then again to remind everyone that they can enjoy the environment but they have to leave no marks. Hey, um, I'm from Pasig and the natural asset that we're protecting there is the Pasig River. Um, unfortunately, it's no longer an ecotourism spot because it has been polluted years ago. So right now, my city government is investing on um, uh, what do you call this? Uh, a cleanup drive every now and then to remove old garbage that could cause epidemic and harm my harm the my, the, my fellow Pasigenos. So what I'm doing now is promoting the potential of the Pasig River to be revived again. So that would be all. Thank you. So so we were thinking that all of these three places, this three ecotourism, still has the potential to be revived. Maybe by helping each other, like throwing out events, making it popular once again, and cleaning the place, make it, making it more fun, more adventurous, like for the coastal, coastal lagoon, make more activities there that people would really enjoy. We're 
Cleanest Series is one of the cleanest and cleanest series in the photography. Um, but what happened to us in Ondoy, uh, many people died and because we are in a low area. That's why we need a massive dra drainage for in the in Yes. Um, hello, I'm from Colombian City and with all of these problems presented that uh, Metro Manila is quite um, polluted and I'm sure that there are some things that we can do because the youth are very skilled nowadays. So with simple things like cleaning up, throwing the bins, the trash to the bins, I'm, I'm very sure that we could come up with a solution to solve all of these problems. Afternoon, we decided um, to give an example for each of the three pillars as discussed by the board meeting quite a while ago. So, um, we think, uh, for me, as a city, we all know that uh, we are known to have the most number of parks and street spaces in Metro Manila. As we all know, it is where it is where um, the Mesa Echo Park is located. The Mesa Echo Park is known to be the largest ecological park in a metro setting. Okay. We chose it to um, be an example for enhanced visitor experience because you can do a lot of things like boating, swimming. It's also a good place for picnic activities. And uh, you can also do baseball and uh, wall climbing as well as they also provide guided tours all over the area. Get it with the bottom line. Basically, they shared everything that there is in Metro Manila. And I just want to tell you all that it doesn't take much for us to make a change. Um, like for me, I'm from um, I'm from Makati City. Again. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Um, so it doesn't take much effort for us to make change and bring forth change. Look, we're not just candidates here. We join for a purpose.